for coming to my channel. I am actually looking through my yearbook and I'm just thinking about what it was like entering high school and what I felt like, all the emotions that came over me and how nervous I was. And I thought it would be nice to do a small series on the high school experience and just kind of helping guide you and navigate you on how to make your way through high school and this first video is really about what to expect so this is for the student who is looking for help getting guidance and getting just navigating through high school trying to understand what to expect um, someone just who needs a leg up so this is who that's for so if that's you definitely stay tuned because I've got some pretty good advice that you want to hear so going into school um, I just remember the summer towards the end of middle school, um, you know, there was this whole build up um, for high school, like, you know, you're going to a school in a completely different part of town. Um, I knew I was going to see a lot of strange faces, a lot of people that I just, you know, never knew, never interacted with. And I just didn't know what to expect. And there was, you know, of course, all the normal chitter chatter um, from my schoolmates about what high school is going to be like and, you know, what to do and, you know, all the stuff that's going to happen. So I was, um, I was really nervous. I wasn't so nervous about it, but I was so excited, right? I was still excited to see what this thing is high school that they call high school. And is it really as terrifying as they say it was? Well, the first thing I wanna to say to that is no. High school is not terrifying. It's just a normal process in life and it's one of your first steps into young adulthood. Um, one of the things that brought me at ease you know, as you walk into the school, you know, the bell rings, of course, there's a sea of strangers, so many strange faces, new faces, tall people, you know, because you're walking with the seniors and the juniors and the sophomores, and you're still like this little bit of freshman. Um, it's that you also see some familiar faces, right? You see your friends from middle school. You see your friends, your neighbors, you know, who are also going into high school, right? So you will not be like left out stranded with no one that you know. Um, and if you're coming in as a new student from out of town, that's okay too, because it gets better. It gets better and it does really quickly, right? So like I mentioned, I saw a lot of my friends' faces that I recognize. Um, when I was in um, middle school and grade school, I used to be in this um, Talented and Gifted program. So I would um, meet other students from other schools too. So even those um, students who were coming in from that other school was familiar, were familiar faces to me. So I just felt really nice, really good to, to just see those faces. And like I mentioned, it gets better. Okay. So you will have a homeroom, right? So one of the things is in high school, you're always switching rooms, boom, boom, boom. You go to math, you go to this class, you go to that class, you go to this class. But in the first part of the day, in the morning, you have an assigned homeroom. So there's no assigned seating there. So you are just gonna find a table, chair, and just get seated. And this is where the teacher does a roll call, takes your attendance just to make sure that you're there. And this might not even be the very first class of the day. So you might have your, you know, first class might be English, and then after that you'll go to homeroom. But generally it happens in the first couple hours of the day where you have a homeroom. And you're gonna see faces that are familiar, faces that are not so familiar, and um, hopefully, um, you can sit next to one of your friends or someone that you just kind of saw in the halls when you were in your middle school and maybe you'll form a new friendship there. So in any case, you're going to spend 10 to 20 minutes in homeroom and then you're going to move on to the next class because your bell is going to ring and then you're going to have to switch and your schedule is going to tell you exactly what you need to do, where you need to go next. If you're lucky, you'll be assigned your own locker where you can keep your personal effects and your books inside. And this will be kind of like your home base where you'll go, you'll pass it throughout the day as you go to your classes. 
and um, um, you can just grab and swap out your books because the books are going to be really heavy, right? They're really heavy books that you need to carry around and the, the lockers here to help lessen that load so you're not carrying like six or five really big thick books um, in your hands each day, right? So it gives your back a little bit of a rest. Anyway, the hallway itself, the school itself might be huge. So you just have to get familiar with it. Learn where the, the class numbers, you know, like the first floor, second floor, A101, B202 or something like that. Get familiar because in my experience, my school was like a maze and I had to just really kind of navigate it. It, it had over 2,000 students, um, which for some people might be a whole lot, for others it not so much. Um, but for me, that was a huge school um, coming from the small school where I was coming from. So I had to learn my way around and um, just get familiar, right? So you're going to need to do that because your schedule might have you on this hallway today and then in the uh, next class you have to go down there. You kind of also have to time yourself how long does it take for you to leave um, one class, get to your locker and get to your, your other class because the teacher in the next class could mark you party and you don't want that all right so the next topic is your classes right when I first started I had a number of different classes the classes were assigned to me and I wasn't sure where they came from I don't know who or what determined the assignments and I just know that I have let's say algebra biology chemistry history um, English that I had to go to and um, that was the schedule, right? Um, but there was also a really pivotal assignment for me um, in my schedule that I had never thought of. I would have never even known it existed. And it was um, turned out to be really a life-changing assignment for me. And that was my computer programming class. I had never um, you know considered or I don't even think maybe I even knew about computer programming but I was assigned a class and I really really enjoyed it and it really opened up a world for me um, as the very first introduction into software programming computer science etc etc it was really the beginning of a really wonderful thing and hopefully your class assignments will be the same uh, because you want something that's going to challenge you, that's going to help you develop into the person that you want to become. And sometimes, at this age, really, you don't even know for sure who or what you want to be. So, the classes that you're assigned are going to play a really major role in shaping the next steps in your journey um, through high school, which will hopefully and eventually lead you into the universities. This brings me to my next point. So my next and final point is about finding that person who is responsible for changing your classes. Um, if your classes are not a good fit, they might be too challenging for you or they might not be challenging enough for you. You don't have to stick with what's been assigned to you, right? You, you're not, um, you're not tied to that that can change and the person who you need to talk to even if your classes are a good fit this is a good idea the person that you should talk to and you should build a relationship with is your guidance counselor each student is assigned a guidance counselor so that person is meant to help guide you through your high school career through the weeks and months ahead as well as the years ahead Right. So you want to definitely leverage that person and make sure that you form a relationship so that you're not just a name on a sheet of paper or a number on a piece of paper on the computer screen. They want to get an, a feel of, of who you are, right? What are your goals? What are your aspirations? And, you know, it might be so far-fetched to say definitively, um, you know, you want to be you know XYZ you know in your life but you should have a general direction of what you want to do and you definitely will know what you like to do or you hopefully you, you know what you like and what your strengths are 
Um, and there are some weaknesses and things that you may want to strengthen, right? So work with your guidance counselor, build that relationship with him or her so that they know you and they can better place you in your classes, right? So it's not just some random placement because a slot's available and oh, 1015 is a perfect slot for, 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 for Nikki or for John, right? work and build that relationship and you don't have to go and see that person every day but it's good to pop in um, a few times during the course of the marking period um, of course the semester or even a couple times you know every other week or something just to just you know kind of check in right because this person is going to be um, the primary person responsible for helping to um, guide you and make decisions as to you know things such as your PSATs um, it's going to be a little early for that for you as a freshman unless you're really really ambitious and just a go-getter um, they're going to be guiding you on your SATs your college application forms um, as well as things such as your FAFSA your federal application for student aid if you do need that right so um, build that relationship from very early and it's going to be important to do that, right? Because if you need to make a change or um, if you need some questions answered about a class or just generally about your career, that person will help you. And I remember in high school, I remember even going to my guidance counselor and reading through my college essays and just getting feedback about the essays and what can change. And, you know, I learned some words in English that year and I wanted to incorporate them into my essays. And she was like, oh, do you really want to use undulate? And I'm like, um, yeah. <laughs> but the point is, they are there to be a resource um, for you. So use them, right? Use them. They're there and um, in most cases they're really happy to help you. They happy to, they're happy to see when a student is engaged and when a student is ambitious and just wants to take things to like the next level, right? Because it's high school and you're in the very beginning stages of making decisions as a young adult and you will be gradually making more decisions and more complex decisions, right? And this is just the journey, the beginning of that journey. And you need the best tools and the best people around you to do that. All right, so that brings me to just the, the, the final point for today. Um, it's high school, everyone has to go through it. It's not easy, but it gets better right it gets better and it's not a crazy thing if you think about it high school you're just still at the beginning right you're still at the beginning of something great to help shape you into the woman or man that you're going to be it's an exciting time and just embrace it right embrace it because you're never going to have this experience again you're going to go through it and it's going to be just something you look back at one day. So try to do it as best as you can and um, go the right way. It's going to be so much fun once you really uh, dig in. So um, that's it for today. I think the next series is really gonna be about friendships and just how you form friendships in high school and just um, and what to expect there, okay? So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, if it was helpful for you, definitely hit the like button, hit subscribe, and hit that little notification bell um, so that you'll know when a new video is posted. And you want to definitely keep track of the series because I think I'm going to be maybe doing maybe three parts of the series. We'll see how it goes, okay? All right. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye. <laughs> hey, you. Before you leave, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.